to start with. But always in retrospect, people can look back and say, the will of God was always best for my life. And we have to submit ourselves and humble ourselves and say, Lord, I want your will done in my life. And God, I'm going to completely submit myself to you. Lord, speak to my heart. You come there with an attitude like that, and God can start revival. The second part says, humble yourselves and pray. You know, so much is said about prayer in the Word of God, is it not? On, on Sunday mornings here with the men meet for prayer, we always try to have some verse that has something to do with prayer and share it with the group. And we, you know, the worst part about it, most of us know what we need to do as far as prayer. It's not like we're ignorant of these things. It's not like we don't know or we've never heard of these things. It's just that what we don't do what we already know to do. And God says there's never, and, and by the way, by, by the state, um, state of precedent, there's never a revival ever come in the history of this nation, any other nation, or any part of the, of the history of the church. There has never, never been a revival without prayer. Because God says you need to humble yourselves and pray. Well, how much do I need to pray? Should I pray over five minutes? Oh, yes. How long should I pray? An hour a day? Well, that might be a good way to start. But you say, how, how, how much do I have to pray? Because I don't want to go over. With an attitude like that, you'll never see revival. You pray until God says it's time to get up. You pray till you touch heaven. You pray to the Lord that gives you assurance in your heart that you, uh, you've got that prayer through. Prayer is the prerequisite for revival that's so vitally important. No one has ever seen a revival, ever seen a revival, ever seen a revival without well, some fervent prayer. And when you get hungry for God, when you get thirsty for God, and you get thirsty and hungry for the, the, the visitation of the Spirit of God in revival, then you can begin to pray. You say, I don't have any idea what I would pray about for over ten minutes. Well, Anybody that knows a whole lot about me can spend over 10 minutes on me alone. I mean, there's plenty of things to pray about. And I'll tell you what, if you, don't, if you can't think, you can remember to start going up and down the pews of this church over here. Yeah, and I'm sure the pastor's done that before when he's praying for. He knows who's on that back pew. He knows on that who's on that pew. And he can stop and pray there for a while. And I tell you, he can, and it won't take long. Now, it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of time. Element is no problem. I'm telling you what, it's no problem uh, uh, finding something to pray about. And it's when you get down to yourself, and you say, Lord, show me what's wrong with me. Lord, show me what you want change in my life. I tell you what, the Lord can reveal things and open up your heart where all of a sudden you're not even saying anything in prayer. But I'm telling you what, you're communing with God in a way that he knows what he's talking about. You know what God's talking about. And sometimes we don't even say a word in prayer. But God lets you know what's going on. And that's the way it'll be in revival. He says, pray. He says, of my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. You know, for a long time, as a young Christian, I thought that uh, seeking his face was just another extension of prayer in the way it might be. But now uh, I read in a commentary one time that seeking his face it's not just able to be able to see God, but after all, he says, no man can, can see God. I mean, one day we may be able to, but these bodies we got right now won't, won't, won't handle looking at God. Moses got to look at the hinder parts of God in his glory, and God he went best about blind and shone with the glory of God. People would go about go blind looking at him. I tell you what, these bodies are not talking about seeing God. He's talking about what he's talking about seeking his face is the, the what I'm told is that you're looking for his nod of approval as if when a king you are going to come into a king's presence. You're going to present your case before him. You're going to present your, your request before him. And the king can either say, get him out of here. Or give a snort and ha have him haul out of here. Or the king can look at you, maybe pass his scepter and nod his head. That he will accept what you're saying. And seek his face. Seek for the nod of approval from the king of kings and lord of lords. In other words, that is our motive for revival. It's not to see what we can get out of this. It's not necessarily just seeing just how far God can clean up my life. It's not necessarily just finding how, what God can do with this church and how he can clean this church up. It's not so much about how what God can uh, give revival for this nation, but it's how we can do that which God requires to meet his approval. 
that he can look at our response to what he's given us and he sees us doing the things he wants us to do. He sees us praying. He sees us humbling ourselves. He sees these things and it approves, uh, it's approved by God and he looks on us and gives us the nod of approval. It's the motive for our revival and it's also, thank God, for the reward for revival. When we get to the point where we're not worried about what others think, we're not worried about what others say. We're concerned about pleasing God in our personal relationship with Him, in our relationship with Him and the church, that we're seeking revival. And God looks upon our heart and He gives us that nod of approval. Then we're on the way to revival. But also He says, then turn from their wicked way. You know, it's not just enough to say, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Lord. You say in your Bible there, I shouldn't do these things. The Lord, you know, you're right. I shouldn't do these things. And Lord, I see from your word there are things that I should do. Lord, I agree with you. I agree with you completely, Lord. I should be doing these things. I agree with you on some things I should not be doing, Lord. That's, it's more than disagreeing with God. It's putting it into action. I mean, to disagree with what God says is to disagree with the word of God. But to agree with him is not enough. You've got to go a step a little bit further and simply put some uh, obedience to that. He said that they'll turn from their wicked way. I mean, God sent his prophets and he told these people, you're doing wickedly. You need to repent. You need to get right with God. You need to change. And some of them listened to the message, but they never did anything about it. And the judgment of God fell. So it's not enough just to believe what God says. It's not enough just to hear what God says. But you've got to respond to what God says. And he says that they will turn from their wicked way. When a person is seeking revival, if God points out something in your life, you need to take care of it. You say, well, I'm not, didn't, I'm not bad at somebody else. I know. In fact, I know a lot about some, some folks. They don't think I know about them, but I know. In fact, there's probably a lot of things going on in, 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 in families and people's lives that we'd be shocked if we knew about. But God ain't necessarily spreading it everywhere. He's uh, more concerned about, hey, you, are you going to straighten up? Are you going to seek revival? Are you going to obey? Are you going to humble yourself? Are you going to seek my power? It's not trying to see how we stack up with others. It's how we stack up with him. And many a time, most of the time, it requires us turning from our wicked ways. Oh, they're not wicked. Yes, they are. Well, it's not that bad. It's not that good. Well, I know people who's doing things far worse. That's true. They need to repent too. Return from their wicked way. As soon as, as long as we try to sugarcoat our deeds, as long as we try to uh, uh, just, just, uh, just give them uh, some false reason why we did what we did, why it's all right to do what we do, we're not going to get right with God. When we see our sin as sin, as seeing God as how the way God sees it, then we may do something about turning from it. And then, you know, I think a lot of times an evangelist comes to a church, preaches the word of God with power, and the, and the requirements of God are laid out, and people come right up to the brink and turn around and walk away. Did God change his mind? No. What did how it happen? They weren't willing to pay the price. He says, God says, you've got to turn from your wicked way. Turn don't mean uh, go over to the side and then, then jump back on him. He says, turn and get away from the things. Get away from the things. So that's what turning from their wicked way means. <clears throat> the people of revival, the plan of revival, what's the promise of revival? He said, you are here from heaven. He said, is, is, you think God means business? God always means business. God's a whole lot more serious than we think he is. He says, if you'll do these things, then I will hear from heaven. You know, it's, it, it, with a play on the words, it's not necessarily that God doesn't hear us going through the motions of our, our prayers. It's not that, that God cannot hear, but I guess what he's saying right here is, I give you the recognition of the fact that I've heard and I'm still listening. I've recognized that your heart's where it should be. I've recognized that you're willing to do what you should do. And he's simply acknowledging us by the fact that he hears us. And by the way, when you're praying, you know when you get a hold of God. I'm telling you, if you don't, you need to keep praying till you get a hold of God. And sometimes we pray and pray and it seems like we, we, don't, we don't hear from God and we have to keep coming back and keep coming back. But it takes time when you get a hold of the throne room, you know when God can give you an answer. And he says, people, if you'll do these things, then I will hear from heaven. 